All right. If you're looking to add Drizzle to your Next.js or Superbase or both project, I'm going to walk you through what I discovered today uh, about doing it. And really quickly, I'm just, just going to address why might you want to do this? Well, it's pretty obvious. All right. Maybe it's not obvious. I like Superbase. I did like a lot of the features. I thought it was a nice bass back end as a service. Um, because I didn't have to worry about finding someone to handle auth or storage or all these different things. Um, but I've come to realize that the super base, you know, if you don't like what they have, then you're kind of SOL and, um, their dashboard has been misbehaving for me. And I tend to use that a lot. And I just figured what the hell I'll just use drizzle. Um, so what we're going to do is get drizzle set up in this project. And I have this project here. It's full of errors. I just reorganized all the structure and everything. So once I start clicking around, we'll get a shit ton of errors, but I'm just going to show you how I got drizzle set up in this other project. And, um, yeah, basically how you can create a client that is just like the super base JS client, because if you're familiar, uh, let's see if I can find I mean, basically what we have is we have a client here for Superbase. So I'm using Superbase gen types and that's all I wanted with Drizzle is I already have a database. It's working. And if I need to make changes, I'm just going to do it in the dashboard because I know how and it's easy. Um, and all I do want to do is bring in those types to my project and then set up a client and be able to use that anywhere. So literally anywhere in my project, I can just do import um, Superbase from this folder and then I can use Superbase and it has that client or that database attached so I'll be able to use it. Um, so let's get started. And the first thing to do is to move this out of the way. Just kidding. The first thing to do is to go over to their documentation, which is good, although I would say it's a little bit kind of, um, I guess advanced, you know, uh, they don't really talk too much about the specifics of getting it set up. So anyways, that's why I'm making this video. So what we'll do is we're just going to copy this. I'm using PNPM because it's better. Don't ask me why I just have heard it's better. Okay. You know, sometimes you just got to follow the crowd. Um, so I'll just CD into my project, open up a new little item here and we'll go CD into my project. And my project's already set up. Obviously, you want to have a project created, create next app or whatever. And then we'll just paste in this command and it'll install our packages. So first we're going to do that. And then we're also going to add drizzle kit. And this little D flag just means dev. So when it deploys, it's not going to install this, but for dev, it's going to install it. And you can ignore this. This is due to Shad CN and React fucking 10 billion, whatever we're on these days. So that has been installed and uh, actually I'm just going to use what I've done um, earlier today because I kind of forgot how I did it a little bit, but I'm going to show you how to generate all the types, how to get it connected to your super base instance. And then, yeah, dude, that's basically all there is to it. Right. Um, so what we need in our project is we need a drizzle.config.ts and they have like default ones. I only have a couple of customizations here. And then you can just add in whatever um, ones that you want. Oh, and they don't say this, but we're also going to need dot env. And then, I mean, that should resolve that problem. And actually, I'm not sure how this relations got here because this is not in that other project. So I'm just going to get rid of it. So we have some stuff here. I renamed the uh, database folder to be database. And then under here, we're going to have a folder called drizzle. And then we'll also have a file called index.ts. And the index, I don't know exactly what it does. There's not a lot of documentation on kind of why it's there. But um, you'll just have it, right? That's all you need to know, really. Um, and then what we do is basically in this drizzle, drizzle config, we need .env because .env is going to allow us to put in our database URL here um, in order to do things like migrations and generate types and all that kind of fun stuff. So now let's uh, now let's actually import our uh, database schema because 
we should be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit connect and this is going to give us um, our connection strings. And something is kind of a gotcha here is what they want you to do is they want you to use your transaction pooler, which is ideal for stateless apps. So like Next.js is stateless. And what we can do is we can just set this up and this is going to be our production database URL. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll copy this and I'm actually just going to drop it into my Bercel, um environment variables right now. So database URL, but make sure that you only select production here. Okay, and then I'll drop that in and I'll have to come back and update the password. Oh, I already have, oh, that's funny. I already have it in here. So now what we have to do now we have to create our end file, our local env, and you need to put in database URL, but don't put in that one you just put in. Put in, if we go connect, we have to put in the direct connection for local. And this is actually kind of funny because when I first did it, it said use the transaction pooler. I was like, cool, bet. And so I did it, but it didn't work when I went to generate the types, when I went to pull my schema from my database. And the reason was, I guess this doesn't work. Um, it just like times out or something. So you have to use a direct connection on your computer to connect to your database, pull everything, because it takes a couple of seconds. And then once that's done, then in production, you can use the, the pooler. Um, so for our local env, we're going to copy this and put that in here. And then you just got to swap out your password for your actual password. This is the password that you type in when you create your database. Hopefully you stored that somewhere. I don't actually, I mean, I'm sure you can change it or something, but yeah, either way, you're going to replace this with your password and then you'll be good to go. Okay. So now we should be good to go. Um, I already said that, but one thing I do is I keep casing as snake case and for introspection, I keep casing, I preserve it because I actually like snake case. A lot of my code is snake case. I don't like camel case except for like functions and stuff. Um, so I just leave it as preserve and then schema filter. I set that to public. It's actually public by default and our dialect is Postgres. This should already be, um, you know, good to go. And then you can just select where you want this schema to go. This wasn't actually working for me. I would, what I was thinking was it would just drop it into this place, but it doesn't, when you generate the types, it doesn't drop here. It goes into our drizzle folder. So anyways, what we'll do now is oh and by the way i set up my dot env so that it would use the uh next js um node env or just like development so it's env dot env dot development anyways what we'll do now is we'll open up our terminal and we'll run drizzle or actually it's going to be pnpm drizzle kit and then pull and that should pull in our schema so let's hit it and it looks like it's working. So you can see this is where it gets stuck when I use the transaction pooler locally. It literally just sat here for like five, 10 minutes. I was like, holy shit. But now we're done. And so what we can see here in Drizzle is we have our schema. So this is all the tables. And then we have relations from one table to the other. So thank God we didn't have to set this up. Fuck that. And we have our nice little migration here. No idea what this does. I'm going to be frank and then some meta, no idea what that is, but importantly, we have our index. And so what I'm going to do with the index is I'm just going to copy this and paste it. So we're importing drizzle from Postgres JS. We're importing Postgres and then we're importing everything as our schema from drizzle schema. And then we can instantiate our client. So we're going to do client equals, um, Postgres. And then we create our drizzle client and we turn off prepare when we create this, because with the transaction pooler on Superbase, you can't use prepare statements. Um, and then also I have logger set to true just because I'm a logger kind of guy. I like to get a lot of logs, big log guy. <laughs> and we're also passing in our schema. Um, and then if I come back to, okay, so this is a query I wrote with, uh, drizzle and what we can see is basically the interesting thing about this is if we did like let's do import um, super base 
from whatever a lib client server and then server boom cherry dude all right so basically the way you do it in superbase is you would say const data or you could just do by the way if you didn't know this you can do data and then name for data and then error name for error and then it'll actually let you use like this so you could do console log and you could log those so if you end up you know running out of if you use data and error once you can't rename it you cannot rename a block scope variable so you can just add a name there it's really sick but we'll just go get rid of that and what you would do in superbase is you would basically select like in this query we're selecting um let's just say let's just simplify it so that's actually a more complex query up here because it's two tables and we're kind of interpolating like figuring out which table to draw from but if we just did select star where company id is equal to install id what we can do in superbase is we can say dot single and this will give us a single entry but i believe in the sql it always returns an array okay so that's why basically what was happening is i was doing current access equals await database and then it was saying i can't access the access token because it's on an array and so what you would do is you could do i mean you, limit one doesn't even do it and you can't do single that's not a method on this and so what i was doing was data equals that at zero but in fact all you have to do in javascript or typescript i suppose is add these braces around it and then it just pulls out i guess the first value from the array and then you can use that so yeah um and yeah we have full type checking here which is fucking cherry and i believe drizzle is going to be a lot more flexible plus i'm going to want to move to neon eventually um probably not right away but i think this is going to give more flexibility and then also if i need to move to neon i can or just a different database um and yeah dude that's basically the whole video i hope you deeply thoroughly enjoyed this video i was trying to get set up with fucking drizzle dude and it was a pain in the ass it took me a while to figure out like how to even get this client working where i need it to and um I wish there was a video like this out there when I was doing it, you know, so, uh, I don't know if you've watched the other videos, but they're all like literally three quarters of the video is like, okay, wait, let me come back to this. Three quarters of the video is like, so what we can do is put not null on this and then it won't be nullable. And I'm just like, dude, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to fucking pull in my schema from Superbase. Let me just get the types, dude. Let me not fucking do all this bullshit. So, anyways, maybe it's a skill issue or some bullshit. People love to leave that on my video. Skill issue. Alright, dude. Nice. Nice, dude. Yeah. Anyways, um... But, yeah, that's my, that's my rant for today. If I uh, haven't ranted enough yet. So, anyways, thank you for watching... Actually, you're welcome for making this video. Um, <laughs> Alright.